Hello and welcome back. Today, we're going to tell you everything you need to know about the basics of the SAT, like who makes it, how it's scored, why it matters, and so on. The SAT is important because it composes a primary component of your undergraduate admissions application. In addition to your GPA, your extracurricular activities, and your personal statement essay, college application offices will also see your SAT score when considering your application, and to varying degrees, will consider them a significant part of your application. For larger state schools, your SAT score composes about 40% of the criteria for admission, whereas for smaller liberalized colleges, it can come closer to 25%, so, while other parts of your application, like extracurricular activities, uh, sports, etc., become relatively more significant. So all, all told, the SAT composes about 25-40% to 40 of your criteria. Your GPA and curricula make up about 30-50%, to 50%, and personal statement essays and recommendations make up the rest. The SAT is offered six times per year, but students should generally plan on taking the test once in the spring of their junior year, and then if they would like to try again, once more in the fall of their senior year. You should not plan on taking the test more than three times, and even that is pushing it a little bit in my opinion. The SAT claims to test your reading, writing, and mathematics skills, but actually, although it appears to test a wide range of material, it only tests a fraction of what you're expected to know in high school. More than anything else, the SAT tests your ability to take the SAT. Although the test makers would like, would like you to think that it tests your ability to do well in school, it is actually far more specialized than they would like to admit. Taking the SAT lasts a total of 3 hours and 45 minutes. With breaks, setup time, and other minor, minor issues factored in, you can expect the entire experience to last about 4.5 hours. There are three critical reading sections on the test, two of which are 25 minutes long, and one which is 20 minutes long. For math, the same specific supply. Two sections with 25 minutes and one of 20 minutes. And for writing, you will see one essay section that's 25 minutes long, one multiple choice section that's 25 minutes long, and then another multiple choice section that's 20 minutes long. In addition to those, there will be one experimental section on the test that could fall into any one of the three categories, which will be approximately 25 minutes long. The SAT is scored on a 2400 point scale, with each subject having a score between 200 and 800 points. The test is designed so that on each section, the average score is about 500. A long time ago, the SAT used to stand for Scholastic Aptitude Test, and then it stood for Scholastic Assessment Test, but nowadays it doesn't stand for anything. This is because it only really tests students' ability to take the test itself. So since it's not actually a measure of aptitude or scholastic ability, it has been changed to just stand for the SAT. To make significant score improvements, you must sharpen your test taking skills, learn how to think like the test makers, and approach your lectures and homework with hard work and regular practice. The SAT, the SAT is a unique test and requires a unique set of skills to master. Knowing how to manage your time, solve problems the right way, and use the process of elimination to, co to conquer multiple choice problems will make a huge difference in your ability to crack the SAT's code. Knowing how much time to spend on each problem will greatly enhance your ability to dominate the test. Unlike regular high school, easy questions on the SAT are worth the same number of points as hard ones, which means it is greatly to your advantage to do as many of the easiest questions for, b before even beginning to attempt those that are more difficult for you. And try to, try to refrain from spending too much time on questions that are tough for you. The number of easier questions that you might be able to do in the same time is likely much, much higher. And unlike regular high school, no partial credit is given on the SAT. This means that all you need to be focused on is getting the right answer. No one cares how you get it, or even if you really know anything about the concepts at hand. All you need to be able to do on any problem is get the right answer, and on multiple choice questions, Knowing what answer choices are wrong is almost worth as much as knowing which one is right. Using the process of elimination to solve multiple choice questions is a vital part of mastering the SAT. Almost all of the questions on the SAT are multiple choice, with the exception of the grid and questions in the essay. The SAT is not school, so forget what you know about traditional problem solving techniques. On the SAT, we can use a variety of tricks and statistical tools to improve our chances of getting a higher score. Did you know that if you can eliminate even a single answer from the options that your odds of benefiting by guessing are in your favor? This is because incorrect answers on the SAT are worth 
negative one quarter point. Correct answers are worth one point and blanks are awarded zero points. This means that on any question where you're able to, where you're certain that even a single answer choice is incorrect, you should guess. This might sound a little bit crazy to you, but it works. On the SAT, if you're able to eliminate exactly one answer choice from each question and then simply randomly guess, then on average you would perform several hundred points better than a student who simply left blanks. Let's look at a quick example here. Okay, so the, pr the question we see here is, Thimphu is the capital of blank. Uh, Thimphu is a city that I have never heard of in my entire life. And when I start to look at the answer choices here, I know what the first one is, but I have no idea what the capital of Andorra, Turkmenistan, Bhutan, or Estonia are. So uh, all that I can do here, I'm pretty sure that the capital of the United States of America is Washington, D.C. So you know what? I can cross that one out. Now I'm left with B, C, D, and E, which are all countries I've pretty much never heard of. So I'm just, at this point, on the SAT, the best strategy, strategy to use here, guess and move on. Don't waste your time trying try to figure out the best answer if you don't have any information. Just have faith in the uh, laws of probability. Take a good shot at it and keep going. So let's keep going. So who makes the test? The Educational Testing Service, otherwise known as ETS, has administered the test since 1901. But a good question would be, why is this even important to us? The reason is because in order to do well on the test, we've got to be able to think like the test makers. If we can read the minds of ETS, we will know exactly how they're trying to trick us. Let's look at a fictional example to see what I mean here. Um, choose the correct answer in the following sentence. Tyler Lautner slash Megan Fox, choose whichever heartthrob you find more appealing, dances blank than Carrot Top. So our options here are A, way hotter, B, more lamely, C, much sexier, D, more attractive, or E, more handsome. And despite what we know about the comparable appeal of Megan Fox or Tyler Lautner versus Carrot Top, the grammatically, cho the grammatically correct answer choice here is actually B, more lamely. Um, even though this, this answer choice is the most unlikely one that students would choose. The word in the blank modifies a verb, and therefore it must be an adverb. And unfortunately for Tyler and Megan, the only answer choice with an, with an adverb here is B. By appealing to your worst instincts and writing a question that makes you want to choose the wrong answer, ETS can increase the number of students missing a question. So, how can we combat this despicable technique? By being aware of our worst instincts. As long as you don't fall for their tricks, all you have to do is answer a bunch of silly questions about grammar rules and triangles, right? Um, so as, so as, your way, as you're working your way through the material and doing your homework exercises, be aware of the traps that ETS is setting for you. We'll be using many of the same traps and exercises and, or traps and tricks that ETS uses in our own exercises to prepare, to prepare you for the test, so keep an eye out. Another key point about SAT problems. Despite their overwhelmingly complex appearance, all the problems on the SAT may be solved in a simple and elegant way. That means if you find yourself attempting an incredibly complex solution to an SAT problem, um, you know, be on the lookout because there's most definitely a better way. And of course, as with almost anything, hard work and discipline are essential if you want to significantly improve your performance on the test. Regular practice is a must, and unfortunately, a bit of memorization may be necessary in order to get the results you desire. Once you're able to create and follow a study plan for SAT prep, we will, have, we will help make sure you follow it and get the most out of your efforts. We will be actively working to help you improve your weakest areas, find the best ways for you to identify the test maker's tricks, and memorize what facts and formulas are most important on the SAT. But of course, while this software represents an incredibly powerful method of helping you prepare for the SAT, there are certain things that it cannot do. Completing your homework, paying attention to the material, and fully dedicating yourself to applying the techniques that we show you are things that you must devote, devote yourself to during the duration of this course. If you're able to do that, you'll give yourself the opportunity to dramatically improve your performance on the test, advance your college choices, and expand your horizons. Work hard and it will pay off. Good luck.